In a speech to his foreign ministry on Sunday, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said Trump was trying to wear Iran down and warned him against trying to stop Iran from selling its oil. Peace with Iran, he said, would be the mother of all peace, while war would be the mother of all wars. Don't play with the lion's tail. You will regret it forever. You cannot carry out these measures. It is out of your capability. You cannot force Iranians to act against their own country. You have clearly shown you are against the Iranian people. He also said that when it comes to the nuclear deal, most countries support Iran, and the U.S. is increasingly isolated in the international arena. But Iran's leaders know a moral victory doesn't pay the bills. And even if Iran is on the right side of history on the nuclear issue, as long as America exerts economic influence, Iranians say they will be prevented from elevating themselves on the world stage. Look, the president's responding to uh, Iran, and he's not going to allow them to continue to make threats against America. If anybody is inciting anything, uh, look no further than to Iran. And the president's comments did come a couple of hours after Iran's president, Rouhani, uh, issued a warning to the United States saying war with Iran will be the mother of all wars and peace with Iran is the mother of all peace. Do not play with... the lion's tail because you will regret it eternally. Uh, now, the White, the White House this morning isn't saying any more about that. Sarah Sanders said, I don't want to preview what the president's strategy is. Quote, President Trump told me that if Iran does anything at all to the negative, they will pray, pay a price like few countries have paid before. It's really not clear, Poppy, what is driving this, where the White House is going with this. Some people have suggested that perhaps it is a distraction from a week of bad headlines frankly, from the president's summit with Vladimir Putin. But all of this, uh, a lot of people shaking their heads. Is President Trump kind of pushing the United States toward yet another conflict on the global stage? He, he was responding to Rahami's, Rahani's comments, but a lot of people are, are, do, are asking that question this morning, sort of why engage like this right now. Abby, thank you. Our Nick Payton Walsh uh, has been reporting inside Iran many times. He joins me now from London with his perspective on, on all of this. I mean, it, look, the, the, the sort of wagging the lion's tail, if you will, or, or pulling the lion's tail came from Rahani. The president shot back, but he, he shot back in all caps with a very dire warning. What's your read on that, Nick? Look, I mean, you know, it is quite hard to work out exactly what the end goal policy really is all of here. And you've got to remember, this is a tweet being fired into a region where the caps lock is always put on uh, Poppy. And frankly, the additional statement from John Bolton saying that if Iran does, quote, anything at all to the negative is an extraordinarily broad uh, kind of threshold for military action, effectively, is what his tweet went on to say. I mean, Mike Pompeo recently, uh, as the nuclear deal was being withdrawn from by the United States, put out a list of about 12 things it wanted Iran to do, a bit of a wish list, frankly, because it essentially said we want you to withdraw from all areas in the region uh, where you currently have military influence. But the problem here really is I think Iran is possibly maybe today, thinking perhaps its tweet went a little bit too far, threatening uh, the mother of all battles, but it also threatened the mother of all pieces too. We've heard from a foreign ministry spokesman calling to state media saying that these kind of threats will unify Iran. We've heard a senior Iranian commander talk about this being psychological warfare. But make no mistake, Iran has been suffering since the US began to reimpose sanctions, began to ask its European allies to do the same. Uh, its leaders have suggested possibly interrupting oil supplies through the Gulf if their oil export are significantly damaged. Um but it's a region where there are lots of potential flashpoints for conflagration here. And the kind of gasoline rhetoric Donald Trump and John Bolton now are throwing on uh, is particularly precarious. U.S. troops are not far from Iranian militia in northern Syria. Uh, key U.S. ally Israel regularly takes strikes out against the Syrian regime. It itself is threatened by Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon. So a lot that could potentially go wrong here. Whether or not this is a distraction, this is just not the kind of thing that necessarily has a sensible or attainable end goal in sight. And that's key here. What is the policy? It is. Nick Payton Walsh, thank you very much for, for that reporting from London. Let's bring in our security analyst, Sam Vinograd. She's a former senior advisor to President Obama's national security uh, team and also worked in the White House, Sam, it's important to note, during the sort of secret beginning stages of the Iran negotiations. What is your large takeaway from not just what the president tweeted in all caps, but also what Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said standing in front of those Iranian students, clearly trying to send a message to the people of Iran 
rather than necessarily the government, the leadership in Iran. Secretary Pompeo did give this speech yesterday, and an Iranian commander said that the United States is engaged in psychological warfare right, against, that's United, what they said this against Iran. Indeed, it's not entirely untrue. The United States has been engaged in psychological operations under this administration mm -hmm. through speeches, through the president's tweets, to support Iranian protesters uh, protesting against the regime, to support unrest, and to really lay out in great detail all of the things that the Iranian regime is doing wrong, both domestically and in the region. So uh, to a certain extent, you have to ask yourself, why wouldn't Rouhani respond? How much can the United States kind of poke the proverbial Iranian bear without expecting some kind of response mm -hmm. from Rouhani? And Rouhani knew that President Trump has a Pavlovian knee-jerk reaction to being threatened and that he would respond in kind. Y you talk about, and you, you've written about how some Iranian leaders, especially the hardliners, are going to see this as a direct attempt to interfere in, in Iranian politics. I mean, you had Mike Pompeo go as far as yesterday to say, and his message to these students was, they, leadership, is enriching themselves at the cost of you, because he knows that the average Iranian is, is, is reeling economically from the sanctions, etc. He went as far as to say that uh, Ayatollah Khomeini has a $95 billion hedge fund, for example, that he's profiting off of. I don't think that the Iranian people necessarily need Secretary Pompeo to lay out everything that the Iranian regime is doing wrong. I think the Iranian people are very aware of how difficult their lives are because of the regime's activity. I think Secretary Pompeo's speech last night, his speech when we violated the Iran deal and the president's own tweets really call into question, what is our end goal with Iran? If our end goal was denuclearization, we would have stayed in the Iran nuclear deal. If it's to address all these other things that Iran is doing in the region, threatening Iran, fomenting unrest, and again, poking the Iranian bear is not what's going I mean, to get back to the table. That is what the administration said. The administration said, you know, this nuclear agreement doesn't go far enough. It doesn't address uh, all of these other issues. It doesn't address financing of terrorism. It doesn't address, um, you know, ballistic missiles. It doesn't address these other threats. So the goal was to address...